So welcome back to Rose Unplugged. Well, Rose, thanks for having me back on. I appreciate it. Please call me Guy, as always. And <laughs> I, I just want to thank you for all you're doing for the president. I know how involved you are. I've, I've followed you crisscrossing the state yes. of Pennsylvania. So thank you, because we need this president to win re-election. The stakes are very high. They really are. And, and thank you for your support for him, too. Everybody appreciates that so much. So listen, we've been watching the news and there's a lot to talk about, but I got to hit this first because it's just astounding to me. Kaylee McEnany's account, Twitter account, was suspended. This is, a, this is a sitting president and his spokesperson, his press secretary, her account has been suspended. We're in the middle of a presidential campaign and we're being sent. Right. And it's not just them. I understand something similar happened to you as well. Sure. Well, I, I believe that I, too, am being throttled, meaning that they're using the algorithm to make sure that people can't see my posts on Facebook. They can't retweet me. And um, the, the individuals on my staff that, that are experts at this, read the, um, they, they can read the posts and how much it's getting shared, and they can tell that something's not right. Now, I'm sure the, uh, the tech oligarchs will say that it is a, uh, it's a mistake, right. but boy, is it convenient that myself uh, and some other conservatives on Twitter and Facebook and elsewhere and, and YouTube, uh, it's it's really suspicious that our um, that our numbers are actually declining, even though the election is ramping up and we're putting out more content. So, to an expert eye, it's very clear that I've been uh, I've been throttled by the tech oligarchs. So, thank you for having me on your show, by the way, because at this point, since social media is being diminished as a platform for me because I'm being censored. It's because of people like you putting me on, on your show and radio and TV that I'm able to communicate to voters. So I appreciate it, Rose. But, but let's just talk about Kaylee, uh, Katie McEnany, or Kaylee McEnany. Her being censored and kicked off shows you just how far the tech oligarchs have gone to throw this election for Biden. Yes. And, and there's so much we can talk about here. Let's just talk about their political bias. If they did this to Obama's press secretary, could you imagine the outrage? And think about how selective it is that they took her off. Now, there's a story uh, regarding Hunter Biden that the New York Post broke this week. Individuals like myself have not been able to post that on social media. Uh, it's also been tagged as unverified. The irony of it is twofold. One is that the New York Post is a publisher. So by law, they can be sued for defamation. These tech companies are wrongfully treated as platforms, meaning they have what's called a Section 230 uh, liability shield, so they can't be sued for defamation. So they, they took a story that a company that's a publisher open to defamation lawsuits, that publisher put it out there. And then this tech company that is immune from such an action decided not to put it out there. We need to strip their immunity and make sure that you can go after them for defamation, libel, and slander because they are clearly publishers. They're not platforms like they claim they are. Now, the fact that we're being censored says a lot about their political motivations. I truly believe that at this point, we need to break these companies up. We need to go Teddy Roosevelt style. They're clearly monopolies. They pose a threat to democracy, and wow. this shows that they have. We also should consider regulating them under the PUC as if they're like the cable companies or the electric and gas companies, because at this point, it's so ubiquitous, it's really a public service. So maybe it's time for us to regulate them and or break them up. And at the very least, they should not get a protective status so they, they can, so that they can pick and choose what is posted on their site and then not face scrutiny. Finally, Rose, I just want to say this. You and I, when we're on social media, we have that check that we've been verified, correct? Everybody knows who we are everybody should be verified. And here's why. We need to know if the people posting this, one, who they are, so, so they're exposed. We get rid, rid of the anonymity. Two, we got to make sure these aren't bots in Russia or China that are in there, these fake accounts. So there's a lot of reforms we have to do. But thank you, Big Tech, for exposing your bias. Thank you for exposing. Do you act more like the Chinese Communist Party officials than you do American business owners? Because the time has come for you to be broken up and regulated. Well, wow, well said. And I got to tell you something, as we go into election night with the returns, people understand that you are not going to get accurate information from social media, not at all. And a lot of people are, are suggesting that we start looking at other platforms right now so that we're ready for election night, like Parler and so forth. 
Right. Well, look, there's a there's a role for the free market. And uh, I, I do have a strong, as you know, I have a strong libertarian bent. Yeah. So we should be looking at other platforms like Parler, et cetera, Parler, et cetera. But at this point, these companies, Twitter, Facebook in particular, Amazon, Google, Apple, they're true monopolies. It's very difficult for uh, these these startup companies to emerge. And even the startup companies, the startup companies' ultimate goal is not to challenge these guys. Their goal is to be purchased by the big boys. So to me, that is a monopoly that is in place. They're just like Standard Oil was. They're just like the railroad uh, uh, businesses were in Teddy Roosevelt's day. And it's time for us to come in and break them up and allow other challenges to arise before it's too late because these individuals, these companies, their owners, and the minions that work for them have much more in co- they have much more in common with the Chinese Communist Party than they do with everyday Americans. They're acting like it. they're censoring viewpoints. They're trying to uh, they're trying to persuade the argument, and their actions are very similar to those that you see by the CCP. Yeah. Uh, well said. You know, and there, there are two more items I'd like to discuss with you, too. Yeah. Um, one is uh, Joe Biden uh, ex- receiving money, actually, from his son. Uh, that's not getting a lot of information. It's part of what you, you know, you try to post and you can't get out there. Let's talk about that just briefly, because it's so important and we need to get that word out. It is. It is. So there's an article that broke. Emails have, have arisen to show that Joe Biden communicated with Hunter Biden and that Joe Biden knew that Hunter Biden was selling access to his father for the tune of millions of dollars. Uh, and it's not a coincidence that the, the two of the places that were paying Hunter Biden the most were that was uh, Ukraine and China. Why is that a coincidence? Or why is that, why is that not a coincidence? It's because Obama put Biden in charge of overseeing the foreign policy of those two nations. Uh, so, so just follow the money. It's very clear that those individuals in those foreign countries were buying access to then President uh, Biden via his son, Hunter Biden. But there, there's that story in and of itself. And then there's how the media is treating it. Let's just talk about the story uh, briefly. We, we have to remember that President Trump was impeached because of a made up collusion and abuse of power. The irony is, is that Joe Biden is actually the one that was abusing his power and had a quid pro quo. He bragged about firing the prosecutor in Ukraine that was investigating Burisma. Why is Burisma important to this story? Because Burisma had Hunter Biden sitting on the board. They were paying Hunter Biden $50,000 a month, not a year, $50,000 a month. And Joe Biden uses power and influence in foreign aid to fire the Ukrainian prosecutor. Clearly, that's, that's an abuse. And President Trump got impeached for just that. And, and President Trump actually didn't do it. It was Biden. Now, let's talk about how the story is being played out. I, as you know, I listen to media from all different viewpoints because I want to know what's reported. Right. To, as of today, I have not heard NPR mention the story. I've not even heard the Wall Street Journal mention the story. I've not heard NBC mention the story. The only people that are talking about this besides Fox News is talk radio. And, and so the mainstream media is showing their bias. They're covering the story. And then they have the tech oligarchs censoring us and not putting this story out there. Again, it is, it is absolutely scary, the state we're in. And the Washington Post loves to run around saying democracy dies in the dark. Well, guess, guess what's dark? The mainstream media yes. and big tech. And democracy absolutely, absolutely will die in, the, die in the dark. It's time for big tech to stop the censorship. And it's time for the mainstream media to do their job and be fair and partial and just cover stories. You know what? Right. We had a vice president that could be bought who wants to become the president. How scary is that? That's frightening. And everyone should know about it. And it's appalling. It's appalling that the media has closed down all talk about that. It's just, it's upsetting to me on so many levels. One more thing I do want to talk about, Amy Barrett. I mean, people love her. You know, they are so impressed with her. She has under fire. She's shown grace and patience and wisdom I just think she's amazing. And I think that, um, I think we're going to move forward. Tell us what you think about, you know, what we can expect in the days to come. I'm incredibly, incredibly impressed by judge Coney Barrett. Uh, the fact that she answered the question, she stuck to the Ginsburg rule, uh, and she explained her judicial philosophy so clearly and succinctly shows that she will replace Scalia. 
Uh, I was a huge fan of Scalia when I was going uh, through law school. I really read his, uh, devoured his opinions because he was so concise and clear in his thought and his philosophy. And it looks like it looks like ACB is going to be just that. She is really going to fulfill the role of her men mentor, Justice Scalia. And what you saw through these hearings was really the schism of philosophy between the social justice Democrats and conservatives. Because the social justice Democrats, and I don't even like calling them the Democrat Party anymore because this is no longer the party of JFK. These are social justice warriors. But the social justice warriors view the court as a super legislative body where individuals are one, not elected, and two, are there serving lifetime uh, appointments. Very scary. They know that they need the court to pass a far left radical agenda, one that's too far left for everyday Americans. That's why they were so focused on attacking ACB oh, yeah. for, uh, for her philosophy. You notice they talked about policies a lot, et cetera. Well, this is not a political position. This is a judicial one. Conservatives, on the other hand, were focused on how she approaches the law, her judicial theory, and her philosophies. That's really what is the role of a judge. Judges call balls and strikes. They interpret the statutes and the Constitution as they were originally drafted. So it really, it puts on display the gap of thought between the two parties and between the two, two systems. And can I just say a word, Rose, on the court packing issue? Yes, I want to talk about that. So we've seen in the last few days how Orwellian new speak has arrived. I feel like we're living 1984. And you remember in 1984, the, the left changed the language and, and what was said. Political correctness actually comes from 1984. But you see, a new, you see new speak creeping into our society with the definition of court packing. Court packing is a term of art in politics and history. And it means that an, uh, a party wants to add justices to the Supreme Court to achieve a political end that they otherwise could not achieve. That is the, ter the term of art. The Democrats do want to pack the courts. They want to add up to 13 justices, just like FDR attempted, because they know they can't get their, their far left radical agenda through with, uh, with the Constitution as, as, as it's now drafted and interpreted by the court. Okay, so they then, the left then turned around and tried to uh, say that court packing meant filling uh, vacant appointments. That's completely inappropriate. Filling vacancies is a constitutional duty that the president has and the Senate has to consent. So they've watered down this term. They've changed the definition. And he who, he, he who owns the language owns the message and owns the narrative. And you're seeing the Democrats do this. And I think the social justice, Demo social justice Democrats will try to not only pack the court, take it up to 13, I think they'll also try to bring in D.C. as a state, which would throw the Senate yeah. Uh, yeah. likely in, into Democrat control. They'll likely end the filibuster. Um, there's a myriad of other things which, which they'll attack as well. So, so much is at stake. I don't think people realize it, but this, every, every election is always the most important election since the last one, right? That's the, bit, that's the big joke when it comes to the uh, presidential elections uh, where the talking heads say that. This time it's true because this time this is the most important election because the social justice Democrats will radically change the, the checks and balances in our system and, and move our country in a far left direction. Well said. Well, my goodness, there's so much at stake right now, isn't there? This is, and you know, you mentioned policy and so forth in, in relation to what um, uh, ACB is going through. Think about this. This election is more than like health care or policies or anything like that. This election is about the future of this country. This election is about liberty. And that's why it is so important. And we're seeing right now how some freedoms are being taken away, even from you, even from Kaylee McEnany. And, and if it's taken away from you, it will be taken away from the rest of us. So, I mean, this is a really important election. Thank you. It's an important election for you. We need you there. So keep up the good work. And we'll talk again soon, I hope. Hey, thanks, Rose. Thanks for having me on. And I really appreciate it more than ever now that I'm being throttled by big tech. So thank you. And thanks. Thanks for fighting out there for President Trump. We need to win this election.